Did Imam speak on the Palestine and Israel conflict? The Imam has discussed the Palestine-Israel conflict in several interviews. Below are selected excerpts from his comments, along with links to the full interviews for further context. Aga Khan Today, the world is divided into theocracies and secular states. Sometimes people talk, quite rightly, about the three nations which are, each in its own way, theocratic, namely Iran, Israel and Saudi Arabia. If they were to change, you would have a different world. If I dare say it, politics should be left to politicians and God to God. Lafay, doesn't the Israeli constitution, which does not allow the formation of clear, stable majorities, also impede the achievement of enduring peace between the Jewish state and its neighbors? Aga Khan, I do not know the specifics of the Israeli constitution well enough. However, as I told you, it makes no doubt that the problem of dysfunctional constitutions is the most frequent source of political instability in a vast number of countries. Lafay, what should Israel do now to achieve lasting peace? Aga Khan, I have never wanted to engage in this debate, but I believe there is one fundamental requirement, a viable Palestinian state. Furthermore, I shall surprise you by saying that, as far as I am concerned, one of the conditions for peace is the acceptance of Israel by the Shia minority within the Muslim world. Iraq has a Shia majority, so does Bahrain and there have always been large numbers of Shia in Lebanon. Let's not forget that Bashar al-Assad is himself a Shia. This is an essential key, something that President Sarkozy understands very well. Agreement with Sunni countries is fine, but it isn't enough. Reference, Politique International, The Power of Wisdom, Issue 127, 2010. Spiegel. Even if warlords and former members of the Taliban are represented in Afghanistan's parliament, Aga Khan, you either accept the results of democracy or you don't. Otherwise you talk about qualifying democracy. Spiegel. That means the West should deal with the radical Islamist Hamas as well? Aga Khan. You have to work with whoever the population has elected as long as they are willing to respect what I call cosmopolitan ethics. Now, it's true that Hamas has a record of conflict. Spiegel of outright terror, Aga Khan. But it would not be the only time that movements that have such a record make it into parliament and even end up in charge of government later on. Can I remind you of Jomo Kenetta and his Mau Mau movement in Kenya, for example, or the ANC in South Africa? Take away the causes of extremism and extremists can come back to a more reasonable political agenda. That change to me is one of the wonderful things about the human race. Reference, Spiegel Online Interview, Islam is a Faith of Reason, 12th October 2006. CP, as a pacifist religious leader, could you play a significant role in the current conflict in the Middle East? Aga Khan, if you are thinking of the Israeli-Palestinian conflict, I would not intervene in a problem that is essentially political. If, on the other hand, you are talking about building a future civil society in that region of the world or in any other, certainly, because we have a significant presence in Egypt and Syria, and also in Pakistan, India and East and West Africa, as well as in Central Asia, which includes Afghanistan. Aga Khan, let us never forget to underline that the causes of discord in the Muslim world occur in the main outside the framework of the Islamic faith. We should be aware, for example, that the Israeli-Palestinian conflict dates back to the First World War. But, above all, take care not to generalize about the Muslim world because it is at least as pluralistic as the Christian world. So it is essential not to lump everything together under the banner of religion, because Islam is first and foremost a religion. Indeed, if I were to say that the conflicts in Ireland and Spain represented the Catholic faith, 
the immediate response would be that I am an ill-informed Muslim. Associating the name of a religion with a conflict really does not mean that the conflict represents the religion in question. Paris Match Interview 2005 Aga Khan Well, I have been a student of history. I have read the Balfour Declaration. I have read the sykes picot Agreement when I was student and it had just been released. So if you will, I know history. And it is terrible. It is terrible. But we have a terrible historical heritage that we have to resolve. We have to resolve it. And I think that this situation in the Middle East shows a fundamental problem that is, if you leave a situation to degrade, decade after decade, it ends up becoming a global problem. And now, we should find a solution. This situation has lasted much too long. Much too long. Reference. Lebanese Broadcasting Corporation. 8th November 2001. CP. What are your feelings about the Palestine Liberation Organization's methods? Aga Khan. That is a highly political question. There are no Ismailis in either Palestine or Israel. CP. You are not concerned about the future of the holy places? Aga Khan. I am not convinced that the problem of the Palestinian homeland is a religious issue, said Karim. I didn't say that it is not. I am just not convinced of it. Reference. Sunday Telegraph Magazine Interview. 27th May 1979. CP. Recently, the World Council of Churches pledged support to African liberation movements. Don't you think it is high time the Muslims took a stand on this issue? Aga Khan I think it would be extremely difficult to get a united front of all Muslim countries on a policy issue such as this. I can understand and sympathize with your question. But, if anything ought to have created a united front among Muslims, it should have been Israel. But even that did not create a united front. So I question whether any other issue will succeed. The dictates of politics are not always coincidental with emotional or moral issues. Reference Standard Tanzania Interview November 1970